it was actually interesting timing because we did the article with CNBC a couple weeks ago, but it came out a few days after you posted what you posted. So you posted yeah. something that got a lot of traction on social media. And then a few days later, CNBC dropped the article with us. When I said that I thought that 10 million was the number for financial freedom. I believe your number was higher than that. So, yeah. you know, it's, 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 um, it, 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 it uh, the crazy thing is I put it on Instagram and then the people was like, well, this lacks context. I'm like, well, that's the point of reading the article. Um, yeah. But, you know, people don't read. So we will provide some context here if, <laughs> if people are interested. So what's, what's your <laughs> what's your three levels of wealth situation? Um, the video was very simple. Like if you're between the, it, it was a scale. So if you in the level of one to ten, you were uh, essentially deemed poor, according to the lady in the video. If you were 10 to 20, you were middle class. And if you were 21 to 30, you were wealthy. And the thing that I took away from the video is that those that are in the poor working class, they use their labor to generate cash. The system is designed by purpose. The middle class uses their ideas to generate money. And then the wealthy use derivatives to generate with their wealth. And they make money off the backs of both. So derivatives would be like a crypto exchange, a stockbroker exchange, even stocks. If you look at what the formation of like owning other parts of a company, you're not doing anything really labor intensive to generate that capital. Yes, you have to go through the IPO cycle, but it's just different levels. Like when I first came on, I said you needed 28 million and everyone had an uproar. But I was talking to people who helped make some of these rules for how much people get paid and how much is deemed worthy. I keep saying as soon as we got into Turo, Airbnb, real estate stocks, Inflation went up and it drove down the value of our dollar. So you need a certain amount of money to be safe. I know for those of you who may hear these numbers, you may be like, man, I don't even have a hundred thousand yet. Use it as inspiration. That's what we all did. When I was seeing people making 30 million a year, like when each one could shot to each one from my hometown, when he went to the league, I was so excited to see somebody from my hometown make that kind of money. And when KK went to the Panthers, I was like, yo, if somebody from the harbor can do this, I know I can do it. Don't let the numbers dismay you or dissuade you from trying to achieve your goals. Use it as motivation to get. But yeah, I agree. You need at least 10 million to hit a point of freedom if you want to be able to take care of your children, your wife, other family members, help be a good steward in your community. It takes a lot more money than ever. I keep I can't find a used car for 10 grand right now. I'm actively looking just to see how much they've changed the used car market in two years. A I was talking to this morning. A Honda Accord costs 30 grand used. Damn. A Honda Accord. What? <laughs> so if you go get a C class, S class, G Wag, like they're driving these costs up to make up for what they lost during the pandemic. The game's not going to be fair. Inflation is always going to go up. And this is why you need more. And this is why you need to invest in the market so you can outpace inflation. So those are the three levels that are really key. Yeah. And notice that what, what's happening. I, I'm glad you brought up the car market because I was, you know, shopping for cars. It during the pandemic and years after the first year after it was there was a shortage. Right. Mm -hmm. It was a supply chain thing. We couldn't get the technology. We couldn't get the semis. in, And, and so you started getting cars without power windows cars without power seats some of the functions mm -hmm. inside weren't there and now that's not the issue but now nope. you have rates that aren't going down for the near future and so yeah businesses are going to find ways to make sure that they their win is built in at any cost at all costs at any yeah. like and the person that is going to uh be put at sacrifice of it is going to be the customer so absolutely if, when, when you go into these situations just know that and, and if you're building a business know that right these are these are lessons right we're talking about even at a 750 actually my credit was like 795 and the rate it was i mean the rate is what it is it's seven percent it's 7.5 like, wow. so the person that has a 650 what are they getting nine trouble 10 percent right yeah. you're talking about people that are financing cars five years so it's gonna i mean ref, i don't know how many people are into refinancing cars i mean you can do it but not many people do do it not many people do it and i think yeah. the highest you can charge for a car is what 16 percent that's know. insane that's incredible that's, that's, that's a lot that's 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 insane five bro. years like, that's the, it adds up and yeah. then she gonna tell you no we ain't going to cheesecake 
Oh, why inflation on the dates. We gotta talk about. No, nah, why is she taking this bad rap though, bro? But I want to talk about this ten million thing if we can. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know a lot of people uh, didn't fully understand it. So when we did the uh, the interview with CNBC and the reporter asked us, "What do we think the number was for financial freedom?" And I said that I thought, you know, depending on a variety of different factors, where you live, but if you live in a major urban environment or a suburban environment, close to an urban environment, East Coast, West Coast scenario, um, you would probably need um, $10 million to have financial freedom. That's and a fact. then he responded back and he said, well, do you think that this is realistic for um, most people? And I, I said, no, it's not. But you asked me a question, so I'm just going to be honest with the answer that I'm giving you, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, the whole point of we're big on entrepreneurship, we're big on investing, we're big on understanding. So, yeah, the average person is not, is not going to reach $10 million in investable assets. But if you're on a pathway to work towards that, you might reach a million. You, write, you might reach 1.5 million. You might yeah. reach 900,000. Guess what? That's better at 70 years old. Than having twenty thousand dollars, you're not going to be you able said to that fly, hit that at the park. Yep. Yeah, you're not going to be able to fly private around the world, but you're going to be in a better situation. See, a lot of people never actually did this for a living. I actually did this for a living for twelve years, so I know what it is to see somebody who's sixty-eight years old with fifty thousand dollars coming into your office asking you, "What can I do?" And you got to be the person to tell them nothing. I can't that's, do anything. This, this is, There's nothing I can do. But you never had most. All these people on social media that's commenting on this, they never had that conversation. Also, these people on social media that are saying like, well, I only need one million and I'm going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. But the vast you majority won't. of people have never made one million. Let me tell you something. One million dollars is a scary. This is a scary number. From yes. One to three million is, is actually extremely scary because when you're below a million, you, you don't really care. It's like you're just hustling and you don't really have nothing to lose. But when you get to a million dollars, you realize that you're technically quote unquote rich, especially where we come from, but yeah. you're a few steps away from being broke. And rich broke, Dr. Duval. Yep. No, it's actually extremely scary. Mm -hmm. yep. And you end up losing sleep about it because it's like nobody wants to be the person that is seen as a failure, somebody that lost everything. So now you're, you're kind of walking on eggshells because you know that that's not enough, right? But you're a millionaire, so you already beat the odds but you'll never experience that until you actually experience it. This is when we talked yep. to Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban told us like, nah, a million dollars, I'd be scared. If I, if I, if I was, a million, I'd, be, I'd be scared. Yeah. This, what, what about, what Ross, saying. what number did Ross say? If he had it, he would be terrified. Ten. He, he said, said 10. 10. He said, at least at you said, 10, you need, he's at scared. Least 10. But can I, can so, I, just, but I just want to, I just want to finish this. So the whole, I'm gonna add, I want to add context to you. I, I just, just want to just finish the whole thing. But so yeah. when I'm saying financial freedom is I'm not, what I'm saying is the ability to live, off of your investments to be able to do whatever you want to do to stop today. Now, of mm -hmm. course, that's that's different for different people, but it's not meant to discourage people. It's meant to tell the truth. So yeah. if we're in an environment where inflation is at record-breaking highs, right, the dollar is losing value all the time, um, we understand that housing prices just continues to go up no matter what happens in the economy. The price of education, nobody talks about the price of education. Oh inflation. my God. Yes. You want to talk about spending $200 to go to InvestFest. How about spending $75,000 to go to a school that you can't get a degree from, that you can't well, get a job from after you get a liberal arts degree? For one year. Or 20000 so, in high school. Yes. So when, I, I mean, do you want me to lie to you or do you want me to tell you the truth? Because I can't lie to you. But that's not going to be beneficial. So that it's, it's outcries and outrage on social media. Well, it's, it's, it's not beneficial because me just sugarcoating something, like I've actually seen the inner workings of it. I've seen that a million dollars is not enough. I've seen yeah. people with $20,000. I've seen people with $10 million. I've seen billionaires. I've saw every different level and have conversations with people at every different level. So to be completely honest with you, I'm kind of lowballing it at 10 million. If we want to get to the honors <laughs> number, to, to be completely 60, honest, I, wanna, I just want to use 10 million because I'm, I'm going to show you the level of consistency. And this was really a kudos to you. At 20, at 18, my only goal was to have a six figure job in life. Like I was like, yeah. I make six figures because I hadn't seen anybody do it. When I was 26, and at this point, you had just started uh, your career in financial advising, you sat me down. I got my life insurance and I asked you the number and the number you told me when I was 26. So that means you were 24. 
You told me it was ten million dollars. I said, why? Why? Why is it ten million? This is at this is fifteen years ago. I said, why? Why are you saying ten million? You were like, look, if you can make ten million, we can put it in a fund, a mutual fund, and that can garnish you three percent on the conservative end. Muni, muni bond, right? muni bond, right? Yep. And you were like, look, you can garnish three percent. So if you get three percent, you don't even you're not even doing anything. But if you can put, make three percent, you've made three hundred thousand. So if you're looking at a hundred thousand as a thing that you were making in, as a teacher, now imagine that you have additional two hundred thousand on that. You can't live off three hundred thousand. And at that moment, I was like, "Yo, it's got to be ten million. It's, it's got to be ten million. And it's, but it, I mean, I'm just saying at that point, and this is fifteen years yeah. ago. I'm like, "All right, this makes sense." And so it was like, "How do I get to the ten million so that I can live with a conservative three percent to to garnish three hundred thousand just by investing?" I'm like, "Oh wait, that makes perfect sense." So ten million was my number. But then again, when we sat down, I said it could be eight figures, it could be seven figures. It just depends on your threshold and, and where you're at and what your leisure is, like what your freedom is. Um, but it's going to change for everybody. But it gives context because when the word, when you said ten million during the interview, and then when I read the article again, it made me think back to that moment. Yeah. But ten million was the number then. It was it was the number then. Listen, you can either get the truth, or we can gatekeep. We're going to choose to tell the truth. I told y'all two years ago, or no, a year ago, when we met with Kyrie. Kyrie's like, I don't have enough money for my tribe. I'm like, it's public record what you make. It's not enough for me and all of my family I'm going to take care of. That's when I said, oh, shit, let me really get to work. If he's concerned, and at the time he was, what, top 10 in pay, how can you rest on your laurels and be like, I'm good? And we've also seen some people be up, up, and then it comes down because they get comfortable. We're going to tell you the truth at all costs, and I know it may be scary, but like I said, use that number as motivation to find a way to get there. Or you're going to have to pay the penalty when you get older. And if you have $20,000 in your in your elder years, I've seen this happen with my grandmother, the healthcare system is going to find a way to claw 100000 at a time out of you with surgery and prescription medications. I know a bunch of people right now that's paying $1,000 a month for a prescription they really can't afford. Then you have surgery, insurance doesn't cover all of it. Now you got to pay 30, 40 grand out of pocket. Trust me, at every level of life and wealth, they're going to find a way to get money out of you. Please take the information and apply it and don't be outraged at it because the outrage doesn't help any at all. And then the, the last thing I'll say before we bring on our guests is that we, we, we're we not going to be revisionists here. We're not going to rewrite history. I did see some comments like, well, nobody ever tells us how to get there. We're not going to act like Earn Your Leisure has not been around for five years. Market Mondays has been around for three and a half, four years, where we provide weekly information on Market Mondays, yes. how to start investing into the stock market, how to invest in ETFs, how to invest in index funds, how to invest in stock options, how to pick tech stocks, how to do all this stuff. And we're not going to act like we didn't have a million and one episodes on real estate, on credit, on Airbnb business, on drop Turo, vending machines, or anything that you can really think of. <laughs> only thing y'all didn't cover was OnlyFans. Y'all covered everything else. <laughs> like, bro, come on, if man. You, if you haven't received the information yet, it's because you're not interested in, 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 you're not interested. So what we can't do, what we're not going to do is, is rewrite history and play the victim. Yep. You'll never say that you wasn't provided the information. Now, you can say that you didn't act on the information for whatever reason. You can say that you you disregarded the information. You didn't you didn't take the information serious. Or you listened to the wrong people. Yeah, but we're not going to sit here and say that information is not, and it's still currently being provided for you for, for free. Hello. Said Hello. Again. So. <laughs> Hello. I get All the right. most complaints about charging on Monday when we do the show for free every Monday. Hello. Make it make sense. Yeah. And Vladimir, that's that's the one thing. That's the one thing. Cause let's get to it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We're gonna get no, to it. No, no. How are you going? Well, I'm gonna talk about just one thing because he was like, oh, "Well, oh, you know, okay. they they charge for information." His people that's similar to him have a history of trying to rewrite history, especially when it comes to black people. So we're not going to let Vladimir rewrite history. Vladimir, if you're not familiar with the platform, 
we have put out more free information than anybody in probably recorded history when it comes to investing, financial literacy, and like real details. No motivation, inspiration, actual steps, how to. This is why people in the comments didn't even respect what you said because it's not even factually true. So if you are going to critique something, then it has to actually be true outside of just you're just repeating narratives that you just heard over and over again. So to say like we're gatekeeping information, that's stupid. You're talking about you gave information to little baby, little bibby. We give information. Call Charlemagne and ask what I did. <laughs> like, you what are we talking about? How is giving it? How is freeing Larry Hoover a black? <laughs> that's, that's how far we go. And you ain't well, sent no money to Larry. No, no, no. First, before we do that, I want to give a shout out to Act for that moment. We got a shout out to Act because he stopped. Oh, no, I mean, he, he did he, the right thing. He did the right sure. thing. He, he held he his did. composure. He had, exactly. But let's talk about this after because I want to yeah, bring yeah, our yeah, guests. Just shout out to Act for that. I just want to say, Vladimir. We're not done with you. We're not done with them. We're not. We're, we're not. Done. We're not. Gonna, well, we we're not going to let the Vladimir's of the world rewrite. Because I do know the Vladimir Tenev. He's a billionaire. The real Vlad. The real Vlad. <laughs> yes, he's a billionaire. You're mad we're called Putin too. Quit playing. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. On a star. You never. It's funny till it's not. It's funny till it's not. <laughs>